This week, I'll show you how to use the stroboscopic feature on your speed light. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, this week we have a question from Christopher in Bedford, Virginia, and Christopher asked, how do I get multiple exposures in one shot using a flash? Well, Christopher, that's a great question. Now you can do this using your normal speed light, and it's a function called the stroboscopic flash function. Now what that means is your speed light, instead of just flashing once, it's like a strobe light, so it's flashing multiple times. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. so what you do is you open up your shutter and the flash fires multiple times, and each one of those flashes freezes a new picture, and you get multiple exposures in one flash or one shot. It's really cool. Now, stroboscopic flash is available on all kinds of different brands of speed light, and usually it's not called stroboscopic flash because that's not a really fun word. So on Canon, it's called multi, and on Nikon, it's called the repeating flash function, and it's also available in like quantum flashes and other speed lights. In fact, the uh, principles I'm going to show you today, it's going to work with any flash that has a stroboscopic mode. So if you're not sure if your flash has this, just flip through the user manual and you'll see if it has it. It's, there's a little page that's dedicated to the stroboscopic mode. and It'll be called multiple or repeating flash or something. Usually it has a picture of a ping pong ball or something that's moving and bouncing around. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, stroboscopic flash is controlled by three things. And we need to understand these three things before we zip over to the studio and put this into practice. So really quickly, let's go over those three things. The first thing is called flash output. In other words, that's how bright the flash is. Now, this is something that you've been uh, setting on your flash all the time. If you put it in manual mode, you're saying I want it to be full power or half power or uh, you know, 1 128th of full power. So you're already doing that probably. The second thing though is something new and that's the frequency. In other words, how many times per second should your flash fire? Now this is measured in hertz. So one hertz is a one flash per second rate. 20 hertz is 20 flashes per second. And so that's how fast this is going to be flashing per second. And then the third thing is how many times should your flash fire? So again, it's how bright, how many times per second, and then how many times total. So for example, if you said, I want my flash to fire 40 times at 20 hertz, well, that means it's going to be 20 flashes per second. And so 40 times means it's going to take two seconds to fire all of those flashes. So it's going to just keep strobing. Now, something that's important to note, the lower the flash output, the more flashes you can get at any given frequency. So at full power, you're not going to be able to get 40 flashes per second because the flash just can't recycle that fast. Now, the cool thing is these aren't going to allow you to set the flashes to something that it can't do. So you don't really have to worry about, well, how many can I get at each frequency at each, you know, all that stuff. It's just going to show you how to do that. Now, in addition to these three things, uh, we also have to figure out how to set our proper exposure. So we're going to be shooting in manual mode. And what we need to figure out is what our shutter speed is and what our aperture value is. And to do all that stuff, it's really not going to help doing it here. We need to do it where you can see me doing this in real life. So we're going to head over to Studio A, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, well, before we start talking specifically about how to set our shutter speed and aperture value, let me show you on a couple of different speed lights how to set uh, the three things we just talked about. So this is an Icon speed light. This is an SB900. And I've already set it into the repeat mode just by going into the mode and dialing that in. So it says repeat. And then what I can do is this very first button here says M. When I plus, uh, press that, it allows me to change the power of the flash. Now, if I'm going to say how many times I want this to fire, I can hit this where it says times. And right here, it says four times, and I can change that up to 16, whatever. And so I can just move that around. And then if I want to change the hertz, I press the third button, and it allows me to change how many times per second this fires. So that's all set right there. Now, uh, the next thing we have here is a quantum flash and I can turn that on. And when I turn it on, again, I've set this in strobo mode, and so you'll see the same thing. There's 50 hertz, number of flashes, how powerful that is. So I won't show you, but you can go in there and set each one of those by hitting the set button. So it's the same kind of thing. And then also over here on our Canon flash, that's what we're going to be using today. It again has the multi-mode, it has how powerful the flash is, how many times it's firing, and the hertz. And to change those, once you get into the multi-mode by hitting the mode button, is press the set button and then the hertz will uh, start flashing and you can adjust that. Same with how many times the flash will fire and then the power. So all these flashes, it doesn't matter which one, there's some way to change those three things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this flash on my camera here. And the other thing about these guys is they really consume a lot of power. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 
quantum flash, this turbo battery here, and that's going to provide a little bit of extra power um, so my refresh rates are a little bit faster because doing this a lot, uh, it will drain the batteries pretty quickly. And so I've got this little cable here that allows me to plug my 580EX2 into my quantum battery and that will give me just a little bit of extra juice and so my batteries won't die quite as fast. Now, uh, come over here, I want to show you exactly what settings I've used because this is really important to understand how to set my shutter speed. So this says 1 16th of full power. I'm shooting eight total flashes at 16 hertz. Now the formula, remember, is to take the number of flashes and divide that by the hertz. So eight divided by 16 is 0.5 or one half. So that means I need to set my camera to one half second. So I'm gonna put my camera in manual mode. I've already done that and I've already set this to one half second. But what about the aperture value? What should I set that to? Well, there's a really uh, a few ways that you can do that. One, you can use a light meter and uh, you can uh, hit a, a pilot right here, a test fire, and you can meter that light and it'll tell you how bright the aperture value should be. You can um, use a guide number if you know how to do that. The other thing that's much easier to do though is almost every flash has a little scale at the bottom here, and this one does, and it tells me that this flash is good to about uh, seven feet at these power settings. So I know that if this flash is about seven feet away from my subject, I'll get a pretty good exposure. And so that's a good place to start. And then the last way to figure out the exact aperture value is to just experiment. And that's what we've already done here. So it's a very non-technical way to do this. I sort of look at this and say, okay, that tells me about five feet away or 10 feet, depending on where my aperture value is. Then I just do some experiments and figure it out. And that's what we've done. So I've actually set my aperture value here to, uh, I've got it at 7.1. And again, this is going to totally vary depending on your environment. Now, the other thing that's really important is to shoot in a totally black environment. Now, we're not going to do that quite yet, but in a second, we're going to turn off all of our lights. And the reason for that, at, because at a one half second or maybe a one second or two second exposure, if you have any light at all, that's going to soak in and it's going to be totally overexposed and your flash isn't going to work. So this is a little bit different than normal studio photography where you have a really fast shutter speed. This is a slow shutter speed, and so you need to have a really, really dark environment. Now what we're going to do here, I'm going to move my flashes out of the way here, and Michael is going to help us out. So Michael's going to come right over here and he's going to stand on this already preset line. Now to focus everything here, I have already focused this manually because when the lights go out, it's going to be really difficult to focus. So I have my camera on tripod. I've already manually focused this. What Michael's going to do is he's going to throw a dart. Go ahead and throw a dart. And it's going to stick in there. And what we're going to do is take a picture and evaluate how good of a throw he has. And this will track his throw and the dart all the way into the dart board. And it'll be pretty cool. So let's walk over here and I'll show you how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off all the ambient light. We have one little light that's shining on me so you can see me in the dark here. And then what I'm going to do is, Michael, are you ready? Ready. I can't even see him. This is already set up to go. All right, in three, two, one, go ahead and throw. Just like that, you can see that we have a bunch of strobes. We've got a great picture. Let's do it one more time. Three, two, one, go. Okay, now we're going to turn the lights back on here. Now you can see that all we're doing is taking a long exposure and then uh, as Michael throws that dart, you can see in this picture that it shows all the different flashes, so the dart traveling along a path. Now one of the things that's really important to note is Michael isn't moving, his body isn't moving. So each flash is adding on more light, more light, more light. So his body is going to be exposed brighter than the dart that's flying along. And so you really have to take that into consideration and figure out are you exposing for the thing that's moving or are you exposing for the thing that's staying still? And you'll have to do a compromise if you're trying to get both like we were. So we know that Michael's gonna be a little overexposed and the darts are gonna be a little underexposed. There's all kinds of fun things that we can do. In fact, we just spent some time here in the studio recording Michael do all kinds of stuff. So we've got ping pong balls bouncing and we've got uh, darts flying and we've got high fives and all kinds of crazy stuff. And so uh, let's take a look at some of the shots that we took and we'll show you some of the uh, things that you can do using the stroboscopic effect with your speed light.
Well, there you go, Christopher. Thank you so much for your question this week. And if you're like Christopher and you have a question about photography, you can send your question to me at askmark at adorama.com. Now, don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center. We have all kinds of resources for you, articles and videos and interviews with photographers. So check that out because there's a wealth of information there. And also, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel or uh, to our iTunes feed so you don't miss a single episode. Well, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Triple Decker. So here's a new tip for you. Watch out. Here it goes. Hold your shoulder dark. That was close. Oh, yeah! Oh. Digital photography one-on-one -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com. <laughs>